Welcome to Electron Line. We've had some requests of viewers to show them how to find or how to derive the equation of the Doppler shift when we have an observer and a source, when either the observer is moving, the source is moving, or both the observer and the source are moving. So how do you do that? How do you come up with an equation? And essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to relate the frequency of the sound that's observed relative to the frequency of the source. So here we have a source with a little microphone, or I should say a little speaker, that is making sound at some initial frequency, or the initial frequency is the frequency of the source, F sub s, and the source is moving towards the observer at velocity source. The observer, in this case, is not moving at all. And what we can see here is that as the source is putting out sound waves, we have a wave going to the observer, we have another wave going to the observer, and so forth, that the distance between the wavelengths would be the wavelength of the source. Now, since the source is moving, before the next wave, the next sound wave is put out, the source will have moved from this position to this position, and so the wavelength observed by the observer is only this long when the initial wavelength from the source is this long. So there's a difference in the wavelength of the source and the wavelength that's observed by the observer. We're going to use some equations here, so that's why we put them on the board, where distance equals velocity times time, so that time is equal to distance divided by velocity. We have the wave equation, where the velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, and we also know that the frequency is equal to the inverse of the period. Now, knowing all that information, let's try to find a way to come up with an equation we have the frequency observed by the observer is equal to some function of the frequency of the source. So we have to find some relationship between the observed frequency and the frequency of the source. Also, what we have to realize is that the velocity of the sound in air is equal to the frequency of the source times the wavelength of the source, or the velocity of sound in air is equal to the frequency of the observer times the wavelength of the observer, or actually, it's not really the way I should say it. Let me try this again. I should say that the velocity of sound in air is equal to the frequency observed times the wavelength observed. That's a better way of writing it. And so V is equal to the velocity of sound in air. So in all these equations, when we're relating the frequency of the observer or the frequency observed to the frequency of the source, we have three velocities. We have the velocity of the observer, we have the velocity of the source, and we have the velocity of sound in air. We'll just call that V. So the, we have to make sure we differentiate between those. So what we're going to do is we're going to first write the relationship between the observed wavelength and the source wavelength. So we can say that the observed wavelength is equal to the original wavelength of the source minus the change in the wavelength because the movement of the source, so minus delta wavelength. So now we need to find out what delta wavelength is equal to. Now, just like we here have distance equals velocity times time, we can call this distance delta lambda, and that's going to be equal to the velocity of the source times the time it took to go from there to there, which is actually the period of the wave. So we have that times the period of the source, and so since the period is the inverse of the frequency, or the frequency is the inverse of the period, we can say that this is equal to the velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. And that can go in here, so now we have the wavelength observed is equal to the wavelength of the source minus the velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. Hey, what do we need to do next? Well, let's go ahead and, and solve this, uh, like bring this together. We have lambda of the, of the observed wavelength is equal to, writing this over common denominator, we have the wavelength of the source times the frequency of the source minus the velocity of the source, all divided by the frequency of the source. So that's writing the right side over a common denominator. When we do that, notice here that this product is going to be equal to the velocity of sound in air. So we can make that substitution. The wavelength observed is equal to the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. Mm, we're getting closer to come up with that equation. 
Next, we need to do something here. What I can probably do here is multiply and divide by the frequency observed. Let's do that. We're going to multiply the, the numerator and denominator of the left side by the frequency observed. So lambda observed times the frequency observed divided by the frequency observed. So notice I did not change the left side. I just wrote it in a slightly different format. Well, this is equal to the velocity of sound and air minus velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. Now notice that this here can be replaced by the velocity of sound in air. So now we have velocity in air divided by the frequency observed is equal to velocity of sound in air minus velocity of the source divided by the frequency of the source. And now we have to solve that equation for the frequency observed. So we can cross multiply and switch the equation around or simply let me first just simply take the inverse of both sides of the equation that might be easier so frequency observed divided by the velocity so simply flipping that over equals frequency of the source divided by v minus v of the source and then by multiplying this on the other side we could say that the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the velocity of sound in air divided by the velocity of sound in air minus the velocity of the source. And that is the relationship between the observed frequency by the observer and the frequency of the source. Now, notice when we put in some values. Let's say that the source is moving towards the observer. Okay, that would be then a positive velocity. And so V minus V of the source will be a smaller value than V so that the ratio will be greater than 1, which means when the source is moving towards the observer, the observed frequency is greater than the source frequency. And that is indeed correct. Now what happens if the velocity of the source is negative and the source is moving away from the observer? If you put in a negative value here, then we get V times or V plus Vs because the negative times the negative is a positive and so that would be a larger value than the numerator therefore the fraction would be less than 1 and the frequency observed would be smaller than the frequency of the source so the equation seems to work if the source is moving towards the observer you hear a higher frequency if the source is moving away from the observer you hear a lower frequency and that's how we derive the equation of a source that's moving towards the observer, an equation for the observed frequency. In the next video, we'll turn things around. We'll have the observer move towards the source and see what happens. And then in the, in the third video, we're going to have both of them moving to see how we derive the equation for that. And that's how it's done.